I'm Scott Mendes, founder and executive director of Western Harvest Ministries. And man, it is so exciting to be with you today on this uh, short interview. You know, our tagline says, impacting lives with extreme sports and God's love. This interview today is going to be very exciting. We pray that it blesses you. We have a dear friend with us today that I'm sure many of you, just by his name and his sports credentials, you're going to know who he is. But I ask that today that if you're watching this, maybe you call a friend or wherever you're watching it from, get a, get a group of people and be encouraged today in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is going to be a blessing. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce to you today a good friend of mine, Mr. Troy Dorsey, eight-time world champion. Troy, how are you? I'm doing great, Scott. Thank you so much, sir. Awesome. Uh, Troy, thank you first and foremost for allowing us to come into your gym here in beautiful Mansfield, Texas. Um, I know the work that you're doing here, but today we just want to share with others um, a little bit more about your career, your family, and um, kind of the mentor that you are. I know in life we all need mentors and heroes, and um, I was looking at how I would introduce you, and my goodness, your credentials just are a long pedigree of the incredible things that God has blessed you with. But will you first share a little bit about uh, your, your career as far as your accolades of how many championships and things like that? That'll be a good place to start. Well, I started karate in 1974 across the street from where I'm sitting right now. Wow. And then uh, five years later, I started kickboxing, and then I also got my black belt that same year, 79. And uh, then uh, kickboxing kind of really got a hold of me, or I got a hold of it. I'm not sure which one, uh, which, which one happened. But uh, I wanted to be a world champion in kickboxing. So I started trying to train with some uh, really good fighters, and I was uh, blessed to be able to train with a guy named Demetrius Savannah. Uh The Greek was his nickname. Oh, and he was awesome. He got killed in a plane crash, though, in 1981. Mm. And uh, that was terrible. Uh, accident. Matter of fact, uh, I flew on that plane many times. I say many times, two times. <laughs> one in El Paso, one in Oklahoma City, and then the plane went down in uh, July '81 and killed the the pilot, which was DK Price, which I trained with him in karate, and the, and then uh, my hero Demetri Vanis, He also went down on that wow. plane. Wow. So uh, uh, soon after I uh, see, I started kickboxing in '79. In 83, I started going to a boxing gym because I wanted to be a better boxer. And then I seen those guys there and the money that they were making. So it inspired me to, to become a boxer. I wanted to be a world champion boxer then. So uh, I've been able to accomplish only by God's strength and his uh, hand uh, being on me, being able to win world titles in kickboxing and, uh, and also in boxing, being the first person ever to do that. And there have been some others that have done that now. But uh, it's still a, a, uh, a, a big thing to a lot of people and not such a big thing to other people. But I was in the ring fighting. And, uh, you know, we all fight battles every day. Yes. Uh, maybe not every day, but about 10 out of 10 are battles. Absolutely. You know, we fight a battle during the day, whether it be with, uh, I mean, we have all kind of things going on in the, in the spiritual realm. And uh, we, have to, uh, we have to say no to sin. So we have to say no to whatever temptation. Temptation is, uh, it, says, it says in the word that no temptation is, is seized you, which is common to man. In other words, it's the same old thing. Yeah. The devil's using the same old tricks. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. uh, but, but he, he, he seems to get us sometimes. We just have to remember that, uh, that Jesus, is, he, he died for our sins. And not only has he died for our sins, he's still there for us. And we have the strength to be overcomers. As a matter of fact, we are more than overcomers. We are conquerors Amen. through Jesus Christ. So uh, we have to walk like that. It's easy to, it's easy to, uh, well, we, we think sometimes I get saved, I give my life to the Lord. Basically, just giving your heart to the Lord and telling Him that you believe in Him, you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's how we get to Jesus. Uh, that then it's just going to be tiptoe tip to the rosies. But it's not. Yeah. It's not. It gets tough in relationships. It gets tough uh, with my business. It's been tough with uh, every area of my life is affected by, can be affected yes. if I allow it. And if I, if I let temptation come in, yeah. well, everything is uh, going to be affected by the enemy. Or it can be affected yeah. by the enemy. So it's up to me to stand up strong and, and <clears throat> say no, no, no. And oftentimes I fail. I'm a, I'm a, uh, 
I'm a, uh, what is it called? I'm, a, I'm not a loser. I'm a winner through the Lord. Absolutely. But I, I have battles that I fight yeah. every day. So I, I don't live the tip of the rosy's life. I wish I did. I wish I could say, do this, do this, do this, and it's going to be simple. Yeah. But it's not. Matter of fact, I think the closer that you get to the Lord, sometimes the more difficult it, it is. Sure. Uh, now, Jesus, was it easy for him? Yeah, no. He, no, he had trouble. It was not easy right. for him. It was not. But he overcame it. He didn't sin. And then he died the horrible, terrible, uh, torturous death on the cross. Yeah. When he was dying on the cross, one of the things that he said, he said, forgive Troy Dorsey. Yeah. Because he knows not what he does. Amen. So I say, he really said, forgive them. Yeah. I've just got the, trans, the Troy Dorsey translation. That's right. Forgive Troy Dorsey. So put your name in there. Absolutely. In the, in the first person, I encourage young people when they read the Word of God to cut out the, the narrator, that it's God's message to you. And like you say, put your name in those scriptures because the Bible says that God is no respecter of a person and whatever he did for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he will do for you and I. And oh, so wow. that's, that, that's very powerful, Troy. You know, you're is. talking about conquering, conquering. Our outreach is called Conquering the Beast. We have a pro bull riding league, a training camp. I work with young people just like you do. But one of the struggles that I see that the enemy tries to battle against us in spiritual warfare is our identity. Um, you said you wanted to be a world champion. I wanted to be a world champion. Many of those that will be watching this telecast want to do great things to find purpose and identity in life. Tell us a little bit about the, the younger Troy Dorsey. Did you grow up as a Christian in a Christian home? Did you struggle with drugs, alcohol? Tell us a little bit about younger Troy. Before I answer that, I want to say that you said I. Yeah. And you know what's right in the middle of sin? S I N. So it's S I N. That's right. So we got to watch out for that. This selfish, this selfish ambition, and I want to do this, and I want to. So we've got to do it his way. Yes. Uh, I've tried it my way. Yeah. I've tried it my way. It doesn't work. Yeah. Only God's way works. Um, the enemy playing off of our flesh, as opposed to when we become a Christian, we know that. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Behold, all things have passed away and become oh, no. new. No. So we have a new identity, and we are fighting for Christ at that point. I was just wondering in your childhood if you were just wanting to prove yourself to everybody by being uh, storing up your riches on earth rather than in heaven by becoming a, a champion. Or will you, did God just use that in a, in a, in a natural flow to, to use the, the boxing abilities for him? I wish I could say that. I wish I could say that it was just real, it was a real simple thing, but no, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. It was uh, I was born and raised here in Mansfield, and I uh, got saved uh, at First Baptist Church here in Mansfield. So I got saved when I was ten, and uh, I'm not trying to make a joke, but uh, but I lived like hell when I was 35. Yeah. So I would go to church, I would dress up, and I'd go to church, and then when I left church, it mm -hmm. would be there. And I wouldn't leave God there, or I would say whatever I, whatever I would say or whatever I do, it would be there for the, for the Lord. And then, and then during the week, I would do whatever, and then, then Sunday I'd come back and I'd go to church, especially when I was fighting, because that's when I was, uh, that's when I wouldn't, I wouldn't do drugs, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't drink, and uh, I have a, what, what, what character trait is that called? A, is it A type or? That you gotta do whatever it is you gotta do. Yeah. You gotta go to the max. Yeah. Well, when I did, when I was doing drugs, when I was drinking, that's what I was doing. Yeah. To the max. Yeah. And then when I was fighting, that's what I was doing to the max. So, oh, you know, I, I need to be doing Jesus to the max. Absolutely. That means spending more time in, my, in the Word Absolutely. and more time on my knees. Have you heard about the men back in the days that had uh, scar, uh, calluses on their knees? Yeah. yeah. You know, my knees are so clean and soft and. Oh, uh, that's kind of embarrassing to that's say. That's where the battle but starts. It, sh it should right. be. I should be spending more time on my knees and uh, spending more time in prayer. You know, He gave us two ears and one mouth. So <laughs> talk I pray twice as much. That's right. What's that? Listen twice as much as listen, we talk. Listen, listen. Right. But see, I'm trying to hurry up and get over what you're saying. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a very good listener. <laughs> so I need to be a better listener. Yeah. I need to have calluses on the inside of my ears from the Lord talking to me. Yeah. Because, uh, but he does, he does, and he continues to welcome me back, and he continues to stand behind me, he continues to, to lead me, and continue, continue, continues to maybe you could say drag me. Yeah. Of course, the, Jesus is not grabbing or dragging anybody. Yeah. He's only going to allow you to have. We have our free will, 
and we have route A, we have route B. Route A being good, route B being bad. Yeah. So which route are we going to take? You know, we, every day it's that, that route. Yeah. Will we go here or we go here? The battle, many of the battles are in the mind. So a friend of mine, a good friend of mine named Randy Hignott, Talk to me about uh, temptation. And when you get these battles in your mind, or you get, you know, you see, uh, sometimes a woman doesn't dress like maybe she should. Yeah. So your mind starts racing. So then he, my friend told me, just start praying. Start yeah. talking to the Lord. That'll, that, that'll, that'll end the battle right there. That's right. So That's right. prayer is so strong. And uh, like I said, I need, I need to be more, more of a, uh, I'm not a prayer warrior. I, I, I can't claim that. Yeah. I need to be more time more talking uh, to the Lord. I uh, turn my radio off, oftentimes turn the radio off because so, I get in the car and I'm going, I'm listening to the radio. Even though I listen to Christian radio, it's still, right. it's, it's, I'm hearing and I'm, and I'm not tied up into thinking too much, but I, I, I turn it off oftentimes to remind me when I get in the car, talk to the Lord. Absolutely. Talk to the Lord. So. You know, Troy, God does desire to speak to us and he'll speak to us whenever we're ready to surrender to his will and spending time with him is vital. Uh, I know as people watch that, sometimes I do it. You know, I know when you get saved, you become naturally humble. You should be a humble person anyway. You know, your, your career, your platform, the things that God has blessed you with, um, in my eyes, looking at your credentials, are, are very big. And when we're in the middle of it, we're just fighting, we're enduring, and we're going through all that. But what, what is, tell us some of the things that you hang on to that is where it was really, you knew that you were in God's perfect will, or if there was a situation, um, you know, in your walk with Christ once you became a Christian uh, that, that helped you to endure and to, to go through those temptations? Well, oftentimes you feel like uh, you feel like quitting. And when I say quitting, I'm not just talking about quitting. I'm talking about giving up. I'm talking about, yeah. I'm talking about suicide. <clears throat> and that's a major thing in these days. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, ha ha he took his life yeah. about six weeks ago. Wow. And I just, it just, it just, it just hurts me so bad yeah. that I, I didn't talk to him about that, that I didn't say anything about that. It's kind of like maybe a hidden, uh, not hidden, it just kind of kept underneath the, so people don't talk about it. Right. But uh, I wish I would have talked to him about it more because uh, there's another temptation and some of us get tempted, some of us don't. I That's think right. if we're all real to ourselves, sooner or later, you're going to get tempted for that, right. <clears throat> tempted to do that. And uh, uh, so... so that, that's a, a poor choice. Yeah, it's a poor choice, and uh, God bless him. And uh, you know, the, the the I'm not worried about him. I believe that he's in heaven. Yeah. But still, he could be here, and yeah. he and I could talk, and we yeah. text each other, and we talk to each other, and and that that it's no more. Yeah. He left a beautiful wife and three children, and uh, so if you're contemplating suicide. Absolutely. And I, I don't want to plant any, I don't want to plant that seed. I want to just let you know that don't do it. God is for you. The Lord, the word says, if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Well, the enemy definitely, he is, and he's coming, and he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said this in John 10, 10, the enemy cometh not, so the devil, he cometh not, but to steal, kill, kill and destroy. I'm standing up, I'm yeah. kind of acting out what Jesus said. Absolutely. He said, if I have come, you may have life and live it more abundantly. Absolutely. So does that mean you're going to be rich? Does that mean you're going to be rich financially or rich with uh, my, your, and your marriage is going to be perfect right. and, and your friendships are going to be perfect? No, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that. Well, you know, Troy, I know you're a humble man. I know that God's using your career, your platform, which, uh, you know, I think you were saying you retired right before, or right after I did. And so, you know, even after your greatest victories, the enemy comes to still kill and destroy at those times. I'm, I'm very proud of your ministry and what you're doing with your skills today, as much as what you were doing back in the world's eyes and, and all the worldly things, because we know that we are called to store up our treasures in heaven. And, and it's important. And what you said about suicide, we, we work with youth and you've seen youth is that when a person would get to that level, they have believed a lie as opposed to believing the relationship with their heavenly father or knowing his word. You see, we don't go into the battle without being fully armored. Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the whole breastplate, the helmet of salvation. And I did that when I rode bulls. And I know you, you did that in your career as a boxer. We step into that ring to fight. And you're exactly right. We, we have to fight 
the fight of good faith every day, no matter what situation you may be in. And that's what commonly brings us together. So I'm very proud of, of what you're doing. Uh, I know your heart. Um, I know that you're instructed today. What? Tell us a little bit about in this new year, like some of the goals that you have uh, for your family and, and where you're at, what God is doing in your life currently today. Well, I, 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 I oftentimes have a problem of uh, controlling yeah. So instead of me teaching every class, yeah. I've asked some great people here to help me teach. So I'm trying to turn more and more over to them yeah. and let them do what, what, they, what they do best and what they can do a great job at doing. And I don't necessarily have to do it all. Yeah. Yeah. So just 99. No, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, need, I, I need to be sharing there. I need to be, uh, I need to be a better delegator. So yeah. my, well, that's, that's one of my goals. Also, just be a better husband to love my wife and, and spend more time with my family. Uh, that's a, I'm sure that's a common goal for Absolutely. most men, uh, spend time more time with their family. But uh, So I'm not the regular old guy, but at the same time, I'm a regular old guy with some regular old needs and wants and desires. Absolutely. You know, um, talking about overcoming the flesh, I preach that a lot when I'm going down the road. And, you know, for me, I really got saved under one scripture, and it became a life mission and a, and a, and a desire to learn more about God's word. But Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and prove what is that perfect and pleasing will of God. And, and Troy, I love God in my heart. I was doing good works, but I didn't have the character to separate myself from the after parties and uh, and uh, a little bit of me in there. And oh, so yeah. I think it's important for people that are watching this, whether you're looking at Troy's career or my career or anybody's career for that, that may be successful because the enemy wants to show us what he wants us to have, but he never tells you the whole truth. And that's how he lies to young people. They are all over the media, the magazines, the radio, the movies, which were involved in media, obviously. But we're here today to help you to understand that God loves you and that we love you and that that coming into a personal relationship and getting beyond religion, denominational barriers, racism, culture, these are the things that must be broken down. And apart from the Lord, we can't do that, Troy. You we know, need sir. that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is, this is the power of God that would daily give us victory. And, you know, it's hard to put what we used to do behind us and move forward, but I know it's like an athlete that doesn't perform anymore. That's what we're learning every day. And so uh, this interview has just been a blessing to be able to talk with you about um, you know, your previous life. What was the biggest influence in your decision to come to Christ? I know you said you got saved in church, but what made that decision to get that choice accomplished? Well, when, I, when I was 35 years old, uh, actually, 1997, my father-in-law drowned in a, in a boating accident at Tex Lake Texoma. Mm -hmm. and then nine months later, my mother-in-law drowned. So I knew the Lord, and I knew, and I totally believed in, in heaven, and I totally believed in hell. Yeah. And I didn't want to go there. Yeah. So I rededicated my life to the Lord in 1998 and began to, uh, to, to try to be the best man that I could be. Yeah. And I want, to, I want to let people know that sometimes, uh, uh, oftentimes, I know I would, I, I would think, oh, this guy, he has a great, uh, he has such a great life. He does yeah. this, he does that, and he has a great marriage and great kids. And then next thing you know, you hear something about yeah. what happened or, or what is happening or uh, what was about to happen. It's like, oh, well, it's, so there's no, there's no perfect uh, person. Yeah. The only perfect person that walked this earth was Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for sending your son to die on the cross, a torturous, torturous, crucifying, cruci it was crucified. Amen. And when God turned his, his back on him, and the whole world got dark, they looked back. They, they had the science had, had capability to look back and see right. that, that that's what happened that day. Absolutely. And uh, so there's just proof it's everywhere. There's a Bible. There's a book called, yeah, there's a Bible for sure. <laughs> but there is a book called The Case of Christ, yeah. written by Lee Strobel. Yeah. scientific evidence that yeah. Jesus is who he is and did what he did. So uh, I just want to encourage you, if you're going through a battle, then trust in the Lord. Like, like uh, Mr. Mendez said, you lean on the Lord. We lean on the, lean on the Lord. This is, uh, there's the verse that says, 
Lean, lean not on your own understanding. Don't lean on yourself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He will direct your path. Absolutely. Now I can say it and I can talk it. Now let's see, I gotta go walk it. Sure. So uh, I can't walk it by myself. I just gotta walk it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise I get in the way. That's it's right. not me, it's not me. It's not me. I've seen that uh, the footsteps in the, in the sand and uh, people would say, the person that that picture was taken of, yeah. all you can see is the footprints and it says, God, where are you at? There's just one footprint there. Where are you at? I'm walking about walking <laughs> alone. And this is the Troy Darcy version again. Yeah. Troy, you big dummy, I'm carrying you. <laughs> That's right. I'm carrying you. And he truly is carrying us. And he truly is guiding us. And everyone wants why he'll go, easy, easy. Yeah. But so often, we hear, we have a conscious, and that's where a conscious that tells us what's right, what's wrong. Little bitty kids, three and four years old, they know what's right and what's wrong. They know. Yes. So here I am at 55, still struggling with this and that at times, yeah. but uh, I know that he's gonna, he's already won the victory, yes. and he's already, get, he's already paved the way for me. So I just have to uh, trust in him more, lean on him more, and depend on him absolutely totally totally just surrender my life to him i'm in i'm in his hand in the bible is that in romans yeah yep it says that <clears throat> it says that uh he has us in the palm of his hand that's right wow yeah that's amazing wow so don't forget you're in the palm of his hand you are safe you are good your circumstances may be horrible your absolutely. marriage may be horrible absolutely. but you turn your life over the lord you live for him and if you've already turned your life over the lord just continue to turn it back over to him. Because I know at times I kept pulling it back, yeah. pulling, pulling it back. If you could say I was here, and I was here. But, but oftentimes, I would just be here doing my own thing. Da, 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 da. Yeah. But, but I got to remember, this is who I'm living for, and I want to be this man. I don't yeah. want to be this man. Yeah. Hey Amen. That's, that's good, Troy. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 that we are to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life i love teaching on the heart because really it's the conversion and the transition between my mind being renewed and my heart loving god but one without the other doesn't make a power source connection no. And so a lot of people you know we know them all they go to church they don't like their job they're at odds with their family everything's out of order and they call themselves a christian and, and they get caught in religion. And so today we just want to encourage you with the truth of God's word. And that if you've been caught in these traps or doing the same thing over and over, Troy, you must see that with students where they have the potential inside of them, God-given talent to go to another level, but the enemy has capped that, whether it be through fear, circumstances, or believing a lie. And so today we want to help you, just like Troy works with his students, to remove those barriers, conquer those beasts in your life that are trying to steal your soul and to keep you in bondage to lust, pride, fear, addiction, worldly riches. All these things that we go after, Troy, can be detrimental in, in, in who Christ created us to be. I, I love your ministry, Troy, and what you're doing in your life and what God has done through you. And I just encourage you to keep spurring with Jesus, keep moving forward, and to use that prophetically for the kingdom of God. Because, you know, let's face it, uh, not only what we did in the, in, the, in the sports realm, but what you're currently doing in this community where you're working with kids and families and you're, you're teaching them various things and skills, but you're doing a lot because you are a mentor and a person that they look up to. And so, in closing, sharing with somebody that may watch this that have those limitations, what would you say to them as we get ready to pray with them to receive Christ? Well, uh, the Bible says it, fear is mentioned 365 times. It, so I like to say that it's not a word because so often at times we operate on yes. fear, like you said. So uh, he says, the, the word says, fear not. Why do you say fear not? That's right. He doesn't want us to fear. Because I am with you. <laughs> That's right. Because I am with you. And right you. now, you're with me. You're That's a big right. guy. Yeah. Someone walk in the door? <laughs> okay. You take no, it. I think. So, 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 uh, so anyways, I want to encourage people to, uh, not to fear. Yeah. It's not, not to fear. And uh, am I saying that I never fear? I'm not saying that. 
Yeah. I'm not perfect, like I said, but but uh, oftentimes I'm reminded. I'm reminded to uh, about that. Fear fear is an acronym. It's false evidence appearing real. So lie, lie, lie. You said it a while ago. Right. Lie, lie, lie. False is what? It's a lie. Yeah. So that that's uh the enemy's that's his tool. Yes. He's a he's a liar. How long has he been lying? Yeah. He's been lying since the beginning. Yes. And then God said He kicked him out. That's right. And he kicked a third of the angels out. So if he kicked a third, thirty three and a third angels out out of hundred percent, there's sixty six and a sixth left. We got him beat two to one. That's right. <laughs> so let's rest in the arms of, of our God uh, and, and know that he has, he has, uh, this, I don't want to use this term loosely. I don't want to use it loosely. Yeah. Uh, he has our back. That's right. He has our front. He has <laughs> our feet. What does it say from the top, bottom of my soul to the top of my head? Oh, he has us. Yes. He's the great I am. He's the king of kings. Lord of lords. Amen. What a blessing. Troy, for those that are watching and uh, as we encourage them today in the faith, um, there's so much more that we want to talk about. Maybe we'll do another show on another occasion. Yes, sir. But as we wrap this up, folks, it's been a blessing to be with Troy, eight-time world champion, boxing, kicks, bo kickboxing, martial arts. Um, I want to, we'll tell you at the end of this broadcast how to contact Troy's uh, place of business and to follow, continue to follow you in some of the works that you're doing. But Troy, we never would close out a broadcast without allowing somebody to receive Jesus Christ. And so if you're in need today or this has helped you in any way, uh, we want to pray with you. And so right now I would like for you, Troy, if you would just uh, maybe put your hand on this Bible and, and look in that camera and let's close out in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, thank you so much for this time together with Scott and his ministry today, Lord God. We lift it up to you right now, Lord God. For the people that are watching, Lord God, if they haven't accepted you, we just say it says in Romans that those who call on the Lord. So yes. I want to encourage you, if you've not called on the Lord, that you call him now. Just mention his name. Just say, Lord, come into my heart. I want to live for you. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe you rose on the third day. And I believe, I believe that you're coming back. So if you want to turn your life with the Lord, just repeat those words. Lord, I love you. I accept you in my heart. I want to live for you. And I want to spend eternity in heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Troy, very much. For those of you that uh, uh, watch this today, we have a ministry. It's Western Harvest Ministries. Uh, you can go to westernharvestministries.com. Again, we'll get you in touch with Troy Dorsey. Um, nowadays, Troy, they can Google you. They can go to Facebook oh, yeah. and just type in Mansfield, Texas. But uh, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege to be with you today, Troy. Well, thank, thank you for thank allowing you. me. Thank you for allowing me to be yeah. a part of your uh, uh, show today. Absolutely. I really appreciate it very much. No, no doubt that was awesome. So we want to encourage you. And until we see you again, God bless you. And we'll see you soon.